prayer and turn the time over to our brother Dan. Dan and Ada, most of you have uh, met them before. We have somebody that may not have uh, been quite as acquainted here. We're glad for uh, jo Joseph and Mary are here from uh, Texas. We welcome you guys and welcome each one of you here. But Dan uh, and Ada have been ministering um, with us and their family. We're thankful for each one of the, your children. Yes. Lord bless you guys. And uh, yeah, Dan uh, will continue to minister with us the days ahead, especially, uh, well, we're going to let the Lord show us some of those things, but let's just dedicate today to him. Amen. Father God, thank you for your anointing. Thank you, God, for the worship. God, that cry is really our heart. Yes. More of your love, Lord. Yes, more of your power. Yes, more of you. Jesus. And God, now as Dan ministers as a son, Thank you for Dan. Thank you for him and Ada and for their family. And God, today we just pray a special anointing and God, that every heart here would be open to receive all that you have for us. May your kingdom come and your will be done. We look to you, Father. Pray your peace in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Robert, for that prayer of blessing. <clears throat> It is a distinct honor, to, <clears throat> distinct honor to be here again with you all this morning. We thank you for your hospitality and your open arms for us as a family. It has been wonderful for us, life-giving, <clears throat> and we thank you. It's just uh, great to be part of the family of God and where God is moving. Amen. And that is exciting to be uh, exciting to be uh, where God is moving and what God wants to do. As his children, he uses us. <clears throat> and so that is our desire is to be used by God no matter where we go or what we do. And so we desire to do that as a family. And as we, if, if you all have followed Christ for a period of time, you know it's not always easy, huh? <laughs> and sometimes it gets a little... Uh, maybe a little confused, maybe you get a little frustrated, and maybe, maybe this, maybe that. But we know one thing for sure, that our God is faithful. Our God has, will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter what decisions we make. And I've even, it's even been brought to me like this. He says, Dan, you are my son. The decisions that you make, I will honor. But if you don't listen to my voice, my full blessing will not lay on your life. Isn't that the heart of our God? He lets us make our own decisions, but that doesn't mean his full blessings will be on our life because we're his son. And so that when we follow his voice and do what he calls, he wants to give his fullness on you. And so that is our desire is to listen to his voice and not our own little agenda or do what he wants us to do or do what we want to do ourselves. Does that make sense? And so we want the fullness of God on our lives, the fullness of blessing. I'm, I'm just... As I, as I look around and see, I, why are not more men fulfilled? Why are not more women fulfilled in the call of God that has on their lives? Why are they not more, why is there not more blessed? Why is there not more miracles following them? Is it possible that God honors them as their sons and daughters, but will not give his full blessing because they're going their own way? Ah. Uh. And we will all be accountable for that one day. And someday I get to see my Jesus face to face and be accountable with how I led my family and how I presented his word. And if I'm not listening to the voice of God, then how can I have the full blessing of heaven to rest on my life? And that is where I desire to walk in. I've not I, I'm convinced I'm not even close to being there, but I'm striving to get there day by day, one day at a time. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Can we help you sing that? That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Just help me to stay healthy one day at a time. 
Thank you, Lord. One day at a time. We're not promised tomorrow. Amen. <clears throat> well, what I, what I want to share this morning, I feel like God has given me this, and, and I can't, it, it has been on my heart for some time now, and it's the word forgiveness. Forgiven. Okay? And as I look at this word forgiven, I've noticed that in my own personal life, and I'm going to share some personal things that I have walked through with this word forgiveness or with this thing we call forgiven. And we have to understand that the word forgiven means to send away, to get rid of. When we forgive someone, we are not holding them accountable for their actions anymore. Does that make sense? When we totally forgive someone, they are not going to they're not going to be able to dictate where we go or what we do because we have sent the offense, we have sent away what they have done to us. We have totally forgiven them. And one thing that really opened my eyes to this was forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a promise. Okay? And how can you say that? How can you say that forgiveness is not a feeling, but it's a promise? Well, as I looked at what Jesus did for us, for you, if you're sitting here and you have given your heart to Christ, our Lord, our Jesus went to the cross and what did he say? Father, somebody say it loud. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so that is a promise for us that we can have life. Why? It's because Jesus has forgiven everything that you're going to do or ever do. It's a promise that he gives you life. There is no reason that any of us can sit here and feel inadequate or feel insecure or think that I've gone way too far and Jesus can't forgive me because it's done on the cross. That was his word. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's not a feeling, but it's a promise. And if I can grab a hold of this promise of forgiveness, if I can grab a hold of this promise of being forgiven by God Almighty, I can walk life to the fullest of what He's promised me here on earth. It's a promise. It's not a feeling. You say, well, you've often heard the saying, well, forgive and forget. Has anyone heard that? Just forgive and forget. How often can we forget? <laughs> Stig is not dot. The thing's still there, isn't it? Yush forgets. I can't forget it. It hurts too bad. Well, if you can't forget it, you didn't forgive them. That's a lie. Yeah, That's a lie. Because us as humans were created to have feelings. Well, you can't go by your feelings. Why can't you? Ah. God has given me feelings. As long as I allow the Holy Spirit to lead my feelings, I can go by my feelings. But all too often we let our soulish realm take over our feelings, and that's when we get in trouble. It's no different than anything else in life. Let the Holy Spirit lead them. And so when we forgive somebody of their offense that they have committed against us, it's nigh to impossible to forget it for a while. It takes time to heal. Why? Because we have feelings and it hurts so badly but we have forgiven them and we have, and we have sent it away. We're not holding that person accountable anymore, but that feeling is still real. Has anyone ever experienced that? Oh, Jesus. Uh, and to forgive. I always thought, well, my wife and I actually sat down and about went nose to nose with each other on this and said, "Hun, how can you forgive this person if you don't want to be around them? How can you forgive this person if you can't just forget what they've done? How did you... It can't be from the heart. It's only got to be from the head. Boy, the Lord took me to the woodshed, brother. <laughs> He's like, whoa. Unverständiges war hässlich. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he took me to the woodshed and he said, there is a thing of forgiving and sending away and not holding the person responsible anymore, but there's still a feeling there that has takes time to heal and to mend and to come together. 
and then let the time heal, and then you can come back together with the person, possibly. I, 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 <sighs> so Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He has forgiven each one of us of every one of our sins. I want to get into scripture here, Matthew 6. For if you forgive men their trespasses, this is right after the, the uh, this is right after the, the prayer, the one that we all know so well. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now in verse 14 it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Do you see what is happening here? <laughs> if we are sitting here with unforgiveness in our hearts towards anyone, the word of God tells us, neither will your father forgive you of your sins or your trespasses or what you come against. Yet he died on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He took the sin of the world upon his life for you and I. And yet we sit here at times and we refuse to forgive a brother or a sister that has come against us or has said something. The word of God says that the Father will turn his forgiveness from your life as well. That's serious. That is is a matter of life or death. There is no other way of putting it. And if I could just put it more plainly, that's a life of either heaven or hell. And as I looked at that, neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. I feel I got a picture of like the father was turning his back. Toward us. Does it happen? That's just me. If we refuse to forgive one another of what we have done or what has happened. Let's go into Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through the end. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through the end. When Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often, shall my how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is, is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as, he was not, but as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me. I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. He said he laid hands on him, took him by the throat. Pay me what you owe. Verse 29. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me. I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he, what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told his master all that he had done. 
Then his master, after he had called him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgive you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you. Do to you if e- my, so my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive <clears throat> his brother <clears throat> his trespasses. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the reading of the word. Your word is holy. Lord, it is without error. And Lord, I pray today in the name of Jesus that it would be used to honor and glorify you and your son Jesus. Lord, that you would be lifted high and holy. Lord, that there would be no other agenda other than to serve you, serve the master, serve the king of all his glory, to give you praise and honor. And we thank you for the word that was written through spirit filled men that heard your voice and gave direction for us in life. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Now we look at this part of scripture. We go back into uh, verse 22. It says, do I not say to you? Up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Here, Jesus was instructing that we not only forgive seven times, but we give 70 times seven. Okay, and if you look at what the number seven represents in the Word of God, that is the completeness, the wholeness of God. Why would they even mention anything like seven times? This is why I believe it is firmly written in Scripture that when we are to forgive 70 times 7, what does that add up to? 490. 490, Thank you. We have, yes, 490. Well, then if you look at other parts of Scripture, it says that Jesus said 70 times 7 just means we continually forgive, 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 and continually forgive. But if you look at this 70 times 7, the number 7 is a complete wholeness of God is what is, is there. And then you go into, um, where did this 7 times come from? In Genesis chapter 4, verse 13, thank you, Genesis chapter 4, verse 13 Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. Here was the first offense that was committed in the word where Cain, where Cain killed Abel. And then it goes on down. I'm going to start in uh, verse 13. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And when we talk about vengeance, this word vengeance means to get revenge. Sevenfold. Here is another, here's one of the sevenfold. It's the the number seven again. And, And God is using this in the Old Testament to bring the wholeness and the whole truth of God into this situation here where Cain had killed Abel. And he said, shall be taken sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. And then the very next verse, 16, then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, the east of Eden. Then Cain went out of the presence of the Lord. And I looked at that part of scripture. It does not record in here, but I've often wondered because Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Was it the fact that he had never asked for forgiveness of what he had done? Is that why he would be avenged sevenfold if anyone came to kill him? You look at this part. See the power of forgiveness. 
Then Cain went out of the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. She conceived and bore Enoch, and he built a city, called the name of the city after the, after the name of his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad. Irad begot Mehul, and Mehul begot, and I'm not sure if I can pronounce all these words, but we come down to Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Zillah. That's quite a name, huh? Ada? Huh, love? Amen. It's spelled a little different. It's got the H there, but that's fine. And the name of the second was Zillah. And Ada bore Jabel. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. Verse 21. His brother's name was Jabel. He was the father of those who play the harp and the flute. And as for Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and arrow, uh, or in uh, bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Then Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lemek, listen to my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be, av- if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lemek seventy-sevenfold. Here God is bringing this into the Old Testament. Then Lemek is going to be avenged again. Revenge 70 times sevenfold. Now what is the number 490 or why would it be seven times 70? Well, if you go into, if you go into Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. I have a few verses here that we're going to read through. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Here was the prophecy that God had given Daniel. And we're on 490 now, remember? 70 times 7. We're on this 490. Why is this so significant in what is happening here in the New Testament? What was spoken in the Old? And I always love going from Old Testament to New Testament to New Testament to Old Testament to bring them all together because the Old and the New are so relevant for us today still. It is amazing the Word of God. The more that you get into it and understand how the New Testament and the Old Testament are just intertwined into each other. It's all through the Word. It's all through the Word of God. You can't get away from it. If you're in the Word at all and you see, it will be there. You cannot get away from it. And so for this 490, 70 weeks, uh, the the 70 weeks prophecy is here what God was given Daniel for Jerusalem. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgressions, to make the end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand, verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. There shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The, the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublesome times. Now, <clears throat> the Lord had actually given Daniel this prophecy for Jerusalem was going to be rebuilt in what? 70? 70 weeks are determined for their people and for their holy city. 70 weeks, seven days in a week, 70 times 70 is 490. 490. And so this number of 490 that God gave Daniel in a vision way back then that it was going to take this amount of time to rebuild Jerusalem and make the the, the city of Jerusalem back to the wholeness of what God had created it. So why wouldn't Jesus tell his disciples here in the New Testament that you can not only forgive your brother seven times, but 70 times seven? If you can do that, it will bring the wholeness of your relationship and everything about you back together. It's just not a one-time deal. God is asking us to continually forgive, 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 no matter what offense, no matter what has been spoken to you. Or no matter what comes your way, God is saying 70 times 7 in order to bring the wholeness of what he wants to do in your life and the person that, has, that, that you are forgiven to do his will.
Matthew chapter 18, we read that. Jesus said, I did not say to you up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. And as you look at this parable that Jesus was telling him, it's no different than us. This is just exactly what we read earlier in Matthew. If you cannot forgive your fellow brothers, I will not forgive you of your sins. This is what he's saying here. I have forgiven you of everything. You have fell down. We just read it. He fell down and said, Master, please, please pay my debt. I don't want to sell my will. I don't want to sell my wife, my children. Please, the debt. And the master said, okay, your debt is settled. That's us getting on our knees before God and repenting of all our sins, saying we are undone without you. And he forgives us of all our sins. And then the neighbor down the road comes into our, comes into our grass a little bit and cuts ruts into it and we, and we hold an offense against him and we refuse to give it, forgive him because he disrespected our property. You see what I'm saying? What Jesus did, what Jesus did for each one of us, we have no excuse to be sitting in unforgiveness. We have no excuse to hold anything against anybody. It doesn't matter how bad it might be. It doesn't matter how bad we think it might be. And I want to share something that I went through with as, as a young child. I grew up <clears throat> young child. I was Rumspringer's age, okay? Anybody understand that? It's 16 years old, right? I grew up Amish. I, I, <laughs> Rumspringer! Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up. I, I grew up Amish. I grew up Amish in Hicksville, and there was two two brothers and, and five sisters. Okay, we had a total of eight. We had a total of eight of us, and uh, and I have a twin brother as well. I always thought he was the favorite. He got everything. Everything seemed to come easy for him, and I could never understand. I had to work for everything, you know, and it seemed like I had to work for everything, and I even had to try to work to get dad's affection, okay? And I couldn't understand. My twin brother seemed everything he did. Dad was like, oh, 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 you know, it's not true. It was just what I was thinking, okay? And so I was I was longing and yearning to feel my dad's affection in my life. And I will tell you, every son that is born has that desire in their heart. You can't get away from it. You cannot get away from it because that's how God has created you. And I didn't understand that at that time. But I got 14, 15 years old and things started getting a little, <clears throat> things started getting, you know, button heads. And then when 16 years old rolled around, I thought that I could do whatever I wanted to do. I thought that I didn't have to listen to dad. Dad, this, nix, at nix, fist, about doom, about doom, cop. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't think that he knew anything and I knew everything. And so the things that he would tell me not to do, I would do just to prove him I could do it. It was pure rebellion. It was pure rebellion against the heart of the Father. And now that I've gone into, now that I've matured somewhat, I see that that can happen very easily in my life to the Heavenly Father if I'm not careful. I am convinced I am convinced for myself personally, the way that I treated my earthly father is the way I treated my heavenly father. I had nothing to do with God. He spoke something I had nothing to do with. He, I didn't even want to go into church. I had nothing to do with church. And it was no different than with my earthly father. Everything that he said, I came against. And everything that he wanted, it just on and on. And then... <laughs> You know, when the Rumspringer days come around, the rebellious things happened, and you, and, and you know what they do in Amish parties. It's no secret. I think it's, I think it's a lie from the pits of hell that, that there's some communities think that, well, it's just, you know, we're just out sowing wild oats. And, and, and they'll come back when they get married and so no okay, say. Well, you know what? One of, one of these times, one of these generations, the Lord's going to come back in the middle of that sowing wild oats. And there'll be some young people lost in eternity with hell if we don't repent and change the culture of what we live in. There's no other way of putting it. 
Das rumspringen stuff is garbage. That's just is. It just is. It's, it's garbage. It's a lie from the pits of hell that our culture has bought into. And as I look back now, I see it. To, to think if I'd have just had one godly man come up to me and say, Dan, what are you thinking? I mean, in love, without the condemnation. I had the preachers come and, and talk and wonder, you know, what was happening. And, and the more of this stuff that went on and they asked what I was going, the harder my heart became. The harder my heart became towards dad, towards church, toward the things of God. I just kept, it, 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 was, it was so miserable. So miserable. And as I look back, dad did the best that he could. Dad did the best that he was taught. I hold no grudges against dad, hear me. The only reason I can preach on this subject is because all is forgiven. Praise God! Oh, it's so wonderful now, but I'll get to that. But <clears throat> there was, he did the best that he could, and when I'd come home late, he'd be up waiting for me, and then he wouldn't let me go to bed. I'd have to go out and do chores, or, or if there was a, I'd have to go out and hoe the garden, whatever. He just kept me awake. That was his punishment. Guess what was going through my heart and mind when I was out there by myself? Oh, I was getting angry. I was like, how, how dare this guy do that? All I want to do is sleep. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the more of this stuff that kept going, the harder my heart became. I could not, I couldn't even hardly, I couldn't even hardly stand to be at home anymore. Bedroom was in a basement, service door out the bottom. I'd come up, go into work and come back and I can remember... <laughs> I can, I can remember taking shorts, work construction. I can remember taking shorts along and then changing when you got there because you couldn't wear shorts as an Amish guy. Or, you know, because he did a house kick you to You can't snap that bone in shorts, bad. You can't live there and wear shorts. And so you changed it there. And then dad would come by and see me. And then getting home, oh, oh, I'd be such a letdown. It'd be such a letdown for him and letdown for my family. And. And uh, I just don't know what I'm thinking. He just doesn't know what I'm thinking. And, and uh, I didn't know what I was thinking either. <laughs> Other than I was being rebellious. There was no direction. And oh, he was so bitter. Do you understand that when there's unforgiveness, bitterness sets in? Bitterness starts coming in. And then what happens? Physical ailments. What? Unforgiveness causes physical ailments? Yes. And yes, and yes, a thousand times yes. Why do you think the Word says that laughter is as good medicine? A merry heart does the bones well. <laughs> laughter is as medicine. If you're feeling down, try laughing. See what happens. It's amazing. If you're feeling down and bitter, it's very hard to laugh. It's very hard to laugh. And something happens within your physical body that, 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 that takes place, that, that ailments start happening. Well, praise God I didn't have an ailment. I was probably under the influence too much to even realize anything. It was, it was absolutely a dark, horrible place that this unforgiving heart, this hard, bitter heart toward my earthly father took that I would never want to go back and relive that. And I believe that is why God has given me a passion for, these, for, for some young men, for, for young men to honor your father and your mother. Even if you don't see eye to eye, go talk to them. Come to a, come to a, just come to a reconciliation of some sort, but, but above all, honor your father and your mother. Your, 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 your days on earth will be long. And that's, that's one thing that bothered me. And the things that, that dad would tell me, you know, in his anger or his frustration would be, you know, well, where do you think you're going to go if you die? That was always a, that was always a, a downer. I, I knew. I just didn't want to admit it. And then the other thing was this. If there were ever a war that broke out, you couldn't even sign up to be a conscientious objector. You need to get baptized in the church. Well, part of me was hoping a war would break out so I could go. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And, and, the, more, the, the, and the longer it took, the, the more bitter I got. And in this time frame, I met my bride. 
and we decided we're going to get married. And then dad heard it from somebody else that I was getting married. That's, that's how bad it was. I, I, I look back at that and it's like, and my wife, bless her heart, said, Dan, if you want to go to Amish, I'll go Amish with you if it's this bad. And I was like, well, I, I don't know if I believe, I think I believed her. <laughs> and, uh, but as I look back at that, even that point of dad and mom finding out from someone else in the community, coming up all excited, hey, I heard Dan's getting married. And they're like, what? They knew nothing about it. So disrespectful, so dishonoring on my part. It, it was one of the most disrespectful, dishonoring things I could do to a dad. Why? Because of the hard heart and the bitterness that I allowed to get stored up in my life and continually, continually store up. And then through the wedding, through our wedding, dad would sit about right here and, and, he, would, <clears throat> and he would be crying. And then he said, you know, Afterwards, he said, you know, that weren't tears of joy of, of me crying. It was, you know, tears of, of, uh, tears of fear, tears of something else other than joy. And this was dad here. And then he said, and dad, I want you to know also that I don't think you're ever going to make it out in the world. You're going to have a car payment. You're going to have a house payment. You're going to have insurance. You're going to have all these things that you're not used to having. And I don't think you're going to make it. Guess what that did to my life? You see, the Word of God says that the, in the power of our tongue, either blessings or cursings come. And so when I talk to Brother Chris, either I'm blessing him or cursing him. That's why our words that we speak to one another are so important. That's why they are so important. It's no different than if you go to a bank. You either deposit or you take out. So I'm either depositing into him or I'm taking out of him when I speak to him. There's either a blessing or a cursing that's happening. And it shouldn't be this way. Well, when he spoke those words into my life, it settled into my life that there was a curse there that I couldn't make it. Guess what I did? I married myself to work. Because I was going to prove to him that I was going to be able to make it. I was going to prove to him that I was going to be able to make it. Because of what he spoke into my life. And more bitterness. Bitterness. And then you can imagine what happened in a marriage. I'm not even going to go there. That's too long of a story. But it, it was because of bitterness and unforgiveness. And I want to, I want to wrap this up here. But in 2009, um, 2006, God kind of started getting a hold of my life some, somewhat. And it, it, it shook me. There was, a, there was an instance why it shook me. And some of us, it takes, some of us, it takes a, a tragic instance. A, something tragic in our lives to wake us up, okay? Can I just put it that way? Um, I don't think there's any more beautiful of a testimony when someone just gives their heart to Christ because Christ has asked them to and lived their whole lives for Christ and nothing really tragic happened. I believe that's beautiful. Beautiful. It did not happen for me that way. But God got a hold of my life, started stirring things up and started... And, and, and I repented of everything, and I can remember distinctly at a prayer meeting on a Saturday night, whenever we got into the presence of God, guess what came to my heart and into my, into my spirit every time? It was dad. My wife can even attest to that when I would be under the influence of not the Holy Spirit, but the things of this world, the first thing that I would start talking about was dad. Why? God has created that into the sons. that They desire to have their father's affirmation. And, <clears throat> and so at this prayer meeting, there was a couple men came up and says, Dan, you need to forgive your dad. And I said, I can't. You need to forgive him. For what? He needs to come to me. He's the dad. He needs to come to me first. I, I'm the son. No. God is, convict, God is bringing him to your life. And, and any time we, we would get together in leadership training meetings or whatever, and anybody would even mention about their dad, or their, I just break down and, and sob. I, I just couldn't handle it. I just couldn't handle it. Because we had not been reconciled yet. And they said, well, you need to forgive your dad. And I, and I, and I said, I, literally, I could not forgive him. I could not voice it. 
There was some, there was, there was, it was within me to do it, but I couldn't voice it. And so, men literally came and took me by the throat, kind of like this, and shook me. Like, shook me and prayed. And said, in the name of Jesus, release. And I literally felt, I literally felt a release coming out of some kind of demonic forces that, had, 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 that I had allowed in my life to shut my mouth and not come to Dad in forgiveness. And as soon as that thing left, I was like, I forgive you, Dad. But it still wasn't over with. It still wasn't over with. And this is the power of either forgiving or not forgiving. I've, I, I haven't often, often wondered, but it's just coming to my mind now, and I've often wondered, where would I be? Where would my family be? Where would my granddaughter be if I had not? Or if the Lord had not, had not intervened in taking care of that spirit that was in me that held me from forgiving. I believe forgiveness or unforgiveness, it's either a matter of growth or not. If you have unforgiveness in your life, God can't... I, I, I see it. God will not trust you with more things of heaven. It will not happen. If there's unforgiveness in your life, I believe it's a demon from the pits of hell that binds up church people and puts them in silence, puts a shell around them. They don't let anybody else come in. They don't want a fellowship. They don't want a hospitality. They don't want to have people over because they might hurt me. I feel insecure. I feel all this kind of stuff happening. Why? Because of unforgiveness. It's a sin. It's a sin from the pits of hell. And when that thing left me, I said, I forgive you, Dad. And it, but it wasn't over with yet. God prompted me, well, go, go to the house and say, and tell him. I was scared. <laughs> I, I was really, really scared. So I go and, and, and I go over there and I sit there and I, we talk for a while. You know how you kind of kind of kill some time and <laughs> you, you don't really want to get to the point of why I'm there. And dad, and dad was looking at me and I said, Dad, I just, I just wanted you to know that, 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 uh, that, I, uh, that I forgive you. And he goes, oh, Dan, he said, that's been long past. It's been long forgiven of. Can you hear it? <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that's been so long forgiven of, you know. And it's like, oh, it still didn't do anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, uh, then in 2009, dad came down with leukemia. In a short story, he came down with leukemia in uh, Sarasota, Florida, and, and God, and, and, I, and, and my heart's cry was always this, that dad would know who I am as his son before he died. Oh, it's so, that so slim. I wanted it so bad. I wanted, his, I wanted his blessing. I wanted the earthly father's blessing on my life just to just, just, just affirm of who God has created me to be because he's given you that authority. But I'm Amish. I've asked that bus for do. He was Amish. He didn't, he, he didn't understand it. But in 2009, mom called and says, hey, I think dad's sick. I said, what do you mean he's sick? Well, he's, all, he, he's not eating. He has no energy and everything else. And, so, and, and she said, we think we're going get to the, get the preacher that's at the tourist church. He's holding meetings, and we're going to have him anoint him for healing. And uh, I said, well, wait a minute. Maybe we can come down <laughs> and uh, see what's going on. And so we did. I, I packed up my oldest brother, J.R. He's still Amish. And and two other younger sisters, and we made a flying trip to Pinecraft, Sarasota, and there was Dad, all all shriveled up. He had, he had, uh, he had uh, lost blood. The reason they found out something was sick, he went in to give blood, and nothing came out. Does that make sense? It was dried up, and they thought maybe it was leukemia or something. Not, I'm not a medical term or not, but um, and so. <clears throat> We, we walk, the Lord had given me all these, had given me a, a picture. His lazy boy here in the corner, his couch was over here. He said, set him in his lazy boy, get down on your knees, take him by his hands and bless him as your dad. This is what God had shown me before I go there. And I was like, I can't do that. He's, he, he doesn't even, 
And, and you know, the 18-hour trip down there, you fight with this thing all the way down there. And I was like, well, Lord, if, if this heals him and maybe he gets to know me, I'd be willing to do it, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> and so he should have, have Reuben Beachy and, and Martin Graber and, and, and have them come over as well. And they were there and they came over. And, and so I did it. <laughs> Shaking like... <laughs> Dad, you know, I, 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 for, I, I forgive you. I, I bless you as my dad. I bless you how you disciplined me. I bless you what you did. I bless you. I, I bless you with everything. I, I just want to pour my heart. I want to bless you with everything. And he just sat there crying. He just, he just sat there crying. And I will never forget it as long as I live. Ever, ever, ever forget it. And he looked at me and says, I forgive you, son. Do you know what happens in the spirit of a son when your father and what you've gone through in the Amish culture realm of when your father affirms? And then, and then not only that, he says, Dan, I want to bless you in where God calls you to go. I want to bless you in, in what God is doing in your life. And I got to share my testimony, what my wife and I went through in our marriage. And I got to share all these things with my dad. With my dad. And he affirmed. Out let me affirm, boy, boy, and live a praise God be to God. And I felt like I could whoop the world. Oh, it just, oh, it just came within me. And, and there was something there. There was something there that I feel some men are missing. They're still at odds with their dad after years, after years and years of being. And I've often wondered, how do you connect with the heavenly father if you can't connect with your father that you can see? How do we connect in the spiritual realm if we can't connect in the physical? And it spoke so, it, it spoke so much into my heart that there has to be an honor and a respect for the fathers in this land, of this world, at this time to have an honor and a respect for them and hold absolutely no unforgiveness against them no matter what they say, no matter what they do. And I will tell you from that point on, it changed not only my life, but the whole family's life. I noticed one thing happened in my daughters. They were younger at the time. And it seemed like they were continually, you, you always had to tell them what to do. You always, like, you know, what? <laughs> Amber, what's, what's coming, she's wondering. But, but, but there always just seemed to be a little bit of a friction. But after God cleaned, after God took the unforgiveness from my heart, it seemed like they just wanted to serve. <laughs> Does that make sense? It, 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 was not a, it was not a friction anymore. It was more of a, I, I, I can't even put words to it, but it was more of a, just of a, 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 a unity, a unity within the family that I can't, I can't really describe other than unity of just bonding together spiritually. Why? Because God had to take me to the woodshed and change my heart completely. No more, <laughs> I say no more pride. I had to get rid of the pride. I had to get rid of all my thoughts. I had to, I had to, look, at, I had to look at what God wanted to do and, and to think that, well, he's the dad. He needs it. Wait, whoa, uh-uh. If God convicts you of someone or something in your life, it's your responsibility to go to them and say, here's my life. I'm an open book and I am sorry. See what that does, even in reading the Word. Do you know how alive the Word came? It, it just totally transformed everything. It's like you read the Word and you're like, I've read the Word for how many years and, and that, what? That, that actually says that in there? And it does. The, the Word of God came to life. The spiritual things in this life, it, it came to life. All of a sudden you were looking at the, all of a sudden you were looking at the community and at people as, as, as not really people who they are, but people who God has created them to be and what God wants them to be. You start looking into the eternal versus the external. Man looks on the outer, but God looks at the heart. So we look at this word forgiveness. I believe it is a matter of life or death. I truly do. I 
truly do. Do you have something to share about your dad? No? You sure? I know, my, <clears throat> I know my bride has just lost her father. And talking about dads brings the emotions up. And from what God did through our family with connecting my heart to my earthly father's heart. See, see now when we get together, or, or, or the weather. We can actually talk about the things of God and what he's doing. Isn't that wonderful? You know, it's just not the surface, you know, uh, it's not the surface stuff. It's just like, you know, what, what is God doing in your life? What, 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 what's happening? What, it's, just, it's just amazing. But my, my bride lost her father, and her heart's cry was that she could have her father's, her father look at her and affirm And <clears throat> bless instead of curse, because in her life, growing up as growing up <clears throat> in the Amish till she was in the first grade, and then leaving, there was a lot of curses that were spoken. There was a lot of things that still hinder her today, 25 years later. And you don't think these words are serious as parents? What we speak into our children's lives. It's a matter of life or death. Let your words be seasoned. Rebuke when rebuke is needed, but do it in love. So her heart's cry was to hear, or to feel the Father's blessing, the earthly Father's blessing on her life as well. Hear me. It is most important to have the heavenly Father's blessing on your life as the earthly. Yet, when you have both, it's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, since you have a skate auto here, since you, it's, it's just amazing, and so, uh, so that was the, the cry of my bride's heart as well. Um, I think she got it for the most part. Sometimes she may doubt. Occasionally, that it wasn't really what, <laughs> but we bless, but we bless the Lord. What uh, we bless the Lord, how God has given us. Let me say, okay. You couldn't wait. We bless the Lord for what He has done in our lives, just through what, forgiving, forgiving, forgiving one another. Remember that your sins have all been forgiven of. Now it's up to us to forgive each other, no matter how difficult it may be. Even in spouses. <laughs> the silent treatment is a tactic and a scheme from the pits of hell. Do not give your spouse the silent treatment. I fall for that. It's easy. Why? Because it protects myself. I don't have to talk, and I can feel sorry for myself. Season <laughs> lahab, us is an ongedo. Forgiveness. The simple words of I'm sorry. In in the grand scheme of things, what are we here for? Serve God and see him in heaven someday. And I've often wondered these people that don't get along, who's going to heaven and who isn't? Or, or, or even different church bodies that don't seem to want to fellowship with each other. Well, who's going to heaven and who isn't if there's, there's no forgiveness or there's no unity or there's no king? There... Amen. It's so heavy, 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 heavy on my heart. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning... In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, that took on the sin of the world, my sin, and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
Forgive them for they know not what they do. And Lord, I pray that my heart is forgiving to those that I might not think that should be worthy of it. Yet Lord, You took on the sin of the world for even the lowest of the low of the low. For every person in the world, dear God. And so Lord, it is our responsibility to forgive everyone. Hold no grudges. Hold nothing against each other. And Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for it is holy and it is without error. And Lord, I pray, dear God, Lord, that it was presented in a way that would edify You, that You would be glorified in it. Lord, that we as Your sons and daughters can walk in complete freedom. Walk in the complete wholeness of what You've called us to be. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.